Okay. <laughs> that doesn't, I, what about these claims that like, well, either Bethany, they want Bethany back or Bethany puts out there, like, I will come back as a producer. I don't know if that's the fans, like this concept of oh, Bethany as their producer, which you is mean, out there. Come out as a producer and not the talent. I don't think she would do that. I mean, I don't know. Why would she produce? She gets paid as talent. I think producers don't get paid. Um, I think she acted as a producer, at least what I saw that last season, um, as talent and as a producer. She had access to information about the show that none of the rest of us had access to. So I could see that, like, you know, she would she knew what was what was said in scenes that she wasn't in, and that was we never knew that. So there was clearly some communication that was happening between her and production that wasn't happening with the rest of us in production. Did that make people afraid to say things that, you know, that they would have said normally because there was a feeling that there was, you know, there was someone who was m more protected or just yeah. like really um, crafting storylines that the producers would be like, okay, we're going to, we're going to do this. We're, we're going to, we're going to go with that, you know, and, you know, like whatever storyline it was, you know, that I wasn't, I dumped her for Tinsley, you know, some, it's like there were 10 scenes where I was even talking to Tinsley. I'm like, did we spend the whole summer together? No. Did, were, are we best friends? No. I, I was at that time still very close to Bethany, even through the beginning of filming and everything, you know, so I didn't know, you know, so there was, there was the feeling that, that it was unequal access to production and, and um, there's this thing called like this chain, like this story chain or something. It was like a text message and all the producers, were, it was a group text with all the producers. And they would be, all the field producers would be texting what was going on in the scene as it was going on. So all the producers doing all the scenes would know, right? What each other's doing at, in real time and what, yeah. what we're saying and stuff. And some version of that, I think she had access to some version of that. That's kind of a big deal. I only found out about it because I, I borrowed um, one of the producers showrunner, um, one of the showrunners phone for something. And then it came up and I was like, what is this? And it was like a really long group. And, <laughs> and he grabbed it. He's like, that's the story, story text chain or something. I was like, oh, what? <laughs> and uh, did Bethany you run back and tell everyone else Bethany was on it? No, she wasn't on it. She oh, okay. Wasn't on it, but she, it, it became kind of clear that she may have had access to it, whether or not directly from a producer or just, you know, there were a lot of people on it. So there were PAs on it. A lot of the production all sort of knew. So it could have just been the relationship she had with, with a, you know, a PA or something. But it, oh. I think I remember thinking, oh, okay, there was just no way she would have known that unless she was told by a producer or saw, saw that in a... Interesting. Yeah. Do you think all three OG she should come back? She would be good as a producer. You, do you think so? Well, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I think she, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. I, 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 I know nothing about her life or what she's doing or where her interests lie. I think, you know, so I no no sense. I, I doubt she would come back as a producer. You know, she's. Do you think she should come back as talent? <laughs> I'm not that. If she wanted to, I'm sure that they would definitely entertain that, you know, um, but, but, you know, I, I don't know, then we, I, I really think that they should find a whole new friend group, like a real group of wealthy women. They exist in New York, you know, you know, that are a little more diverse and, and just pick one, right? Like get one. And then, you know, those women hang around with other equally minded women, right? As wealthy women. Yeah. Right. It's like Beverly Hills, Kyle, then her sisters. And then like they, you know, it's like, there is a group, right. That you could, so you get to find that group in New York. You find that woman who is over the top, fabulous and, you know, wealthy and willing to be on the show. It's, it's hard in New York because in mm -hmm. New York, money is king, right? So if you have real money in New York, you're not gonna be on this show. And in, in LA and in Beverly Hills, I think fame is king. I don't mean to sound derogatory about that. It's just like, you can have a a lot of money and those women have legit a lot of money but there's something about LA it's still like fame is a little above money in New York it's like if you have money you're that's all you know that's what that's what matters in New York and people in New York aren't like oh do I really I want to be on a tv show now too it's like not women with 50 million dollars in the bank I have said this 
10 billion times on this podcast. I completely agree. Like yeah, women, fame. it's all about money in New York, way over fame and people with real like fuck you money are oh. like, I am not going to be on this damn show. Are you kidding right. me? But in Beverly Hills, they go on the show. I think those women, some of them, a majority of them have real, real money, right? And they're, they're on the show and, and a lot of them are actresses and stuff. So it kind of works that for them. It's just a different dynamic than, than New York. There's another thing on the internet that says I'm worth 50 million. There's some website that says. I forgot about that one. Yes, oh. it does. It says right. you're worth every $50 million. I, I'm hustling. I'm hustling. I started a company with a friend of mine and it's like, I feel like every time I, I talk about it and stuff, it's like, or, or do an ad, you know, a collab on Instagram and monetize it. They're like, oh, why are you doing this? You know, you have, you have so much money. This is embarrassing. It's like, I'm a single girl with bills. I've said that since the beginning on the show, off the show. And I realized there's that website that's, you know, I used to joke about it. I used to say, yeah, it's 50 million pesos. Like I'm not like, if I had $50 million, would I be on this show? No, like, think about it. I would be on the show at $50 million. And what journalist, author, writer has $50 million? Like that's, a, that's like not, you know, if you're Katie Couric. And yours hasn't changed. It still says 50 million. Oh, it million. does? It still I says it. taken down. Like I Andy's has gone up over the years. Like that yours says 50 million still. I can guarantee you I mean, that. it's almost like I'm one of the wealthiest housewives that ever been. It's like. Well, I was going to say, if, if you type in wealthiest housewives or who's the wealthiest housewife, yes. there's a few names that come up. You are absolutely in I that top list. How, I don't know how that started. I think I, I kind of feel like, did Bravo put that out there just as like when I was being cast, like just to. I just always assumed it was because of like the Kennedy connection. That's honestly where my mind went. I mean, come on. First of all, I'm a Radzi Will. And second of all, the, 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 the rumors of Radzi Will wealth have been greatly exaggerated to quote Mark uh, Twain. Well, I think the two combined, I think that's where it all gets like, and people are like, they didn't have, but we, we never, we never lived like that. And uh, you know, I, I work, you know, I'm working journalist and working writer. It's like, you don't make, you don't make that money. Now you can't even get paid to write. I did a story for a magazine and it was like, it was like digital. So they don't pay. I'm like, wait, what? It was like 2,500 words. Someone contacted me at some point and wanted me to do like a weekly housewives recap thing, not for this podcast. Right. And I was like, whatever it was, the pay was like, I, it was insane. Like as far as how low it was, I was like, what? Like, no, I don't, I don't why am I going to do this? I mean, it, it wasn't like people or some magazine, everyone knows it was some other thing. And I'm like, how much am I going to get paid? Like a dollar? Like, no, no, thanks. Yeah. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. Yeah. But yes, it still says $50 million. That's so funny. Well, there you go. What company, what is your company? Would you like to talk about that for a few oh, minutes well, before we leave? Kind of, yeah. During the, during the pandemic, my, my friend of mine, she, she's an ex trader business, a real entrepreneur, an ex trader at JP Morgan. She retired and, and, uh, and we were talking about, um, you know, cause I am sex positive and I've been that way on the show. And that's kind of like part of my brand. Um, we were talking about sex, sex and, uh, you know, for women coming into their forties and what they know about their body and what they don't.